Well, hey guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the build of the Hispano Aviation Bull aircraft. We are getting started on this aircraft. If you missed the unboxing video, I'll link it down below. Really looking forward to putting this one together. So stay tuned and we'll get started on this aircraft. All right guys, like normal, I like to do a quick overview of all the equipment that's going in this aircraft. And uh, that's what we're doing at the be very beginning of this video. So pretty straightforward in a sports jet like this. So let's take a look at what's going inside. All right, so first thing, we've got the protection covers there from D covers. Those came with the kit. We got the fuselage bag. Nez is keeping that fuselage bag warm. We've got the wing bags. The tail bag is right behind. So starting with the power plant, we'll be installing a Swewin 170 in this aircraft. Now, ideally, I was initially thinking about putting a 190 in because they're the same weight, same size, same case size, all that kind of stuff. I sold my Ultra Flash recently and this engine came out of the Ultra Flash. It's got like uh, 27 cycles, three hours, 45 minutes on it. So really not much. So that's the power plant for this thing. We've got our model aviation products tank. All right. So MAP model aviation products, air traps. I love them because they're simple. They're made in Canada. Uh, we've got our main tank here, which is from CM Jets. Thank you, Carlos from CM Jets for sending this tank. Now, normally the tank would come with the kit, but uh, we got uh, the tank separately from CM Jets. It's a unique tank because we've got it split for fuel and smoke, but we'll take a look at that later. Uh, we've got servos, not entirely sure what servos are going to be installing in this aircraft yet. Uh, we may go with MKS, we may go with JR. Uh, I do have some JRs sitting around as well too that need to be used, So, uh, but part of it's going to be decided based on what actually fits best in the aircraft. Uh, we've got uh, our Cortex Pro here and our Jetty system that we're going to be using a Central Box 220 on. So the Jetty DS24 is going to pilot the aircraft. Uh, we've got our Central Box 220 and we'll be using that with uh, a Rex 12 receiver and probably a Rex 7 or 12 set up in clone mode. And then we'll have a remote switch as well for turning the aircraft on and off outside of the, uh, the aircraft from your radio. So that is what is going to be piloting this aircraft. Um, I know a lot of guys have issues or they say clone is not the best option and that's okay. Um, I appreciate that but uh, we've got some specific ways to set this up. Uh, the Cortex is awesome because it incorporates so well with the Jetty system. I love it because you can actually do all the setup and everything from your radio. Uh, we've got uh, our fuel filler fitting here and of course electron retracts. Uh, these are the ER-40s that are going to be powering or piloting or landing the aircraft. Uh, they're actually in those boxes there. I just put the, uh, the empty box in front of it because it looks better for the picture. All right, guys, so here's a shot of the inside. We've gone through and done a little bit of work. I'll show you what that all is first. So if you are to order one of these aircraft, your tank is already gonna come mounted in the aircraft, most likely. Um, so because I got this tank from CM Jets, thank you, Carlos, um, my tank didn't come with any of the stuff mounted on it. So Carlos got me the wood kit, which is the front piece of wood here and the back pieces that fit over the wing tube. So I've already gone ahead and glued these in place. I'll tell you a bit about my process. It's fairly easy. And then I made this brace over top. So if you look at some of the stock pictures, uh, they've got the brace installed. So I just essentially made my own piece. This is a carbon piece, uh, laminated piece of plywood, and then everything's been painted. So I've gone through and painted everything black. So this was fairly easy to do, but basically the first step to do is I, measured the spacing of that little piece of wood that's mounted on the wing tube acceptor. 
and mounted these back pieces with enough room for that to fit over top of that little piece of wood. So that was the step number one. Then we got this installed, this piece installed. It was already, the bolts were already pre-aligned and everything for the bottom. And then I glued this piece in place. As a final step, we did the top brace. I basically formed this brace, got it all fit clamped it in place, and then as a last step, I drilled the holes going through. So that's the tank mounting, it was pretty straightforward. If you do run into a situation where you're doing your own tank mounting, it is not complicated. So that's kind of one of the first things we've done. Took out the front trace, we've got access to everything. I've been going through and putting CA on all the exposed wood, and installed a piece of ply right here and a little strip right here because the hatch that uh, covers the engine bay, uh, it, there's no support on the front and the back. So I put a, those pieces of wood there so the cover wouldn't sink in. So is it necessary? Probably not, but uh, one of those first things that I've done. So that's basically the pre-work that I've done. Uh, what else I'm gonna do here is put a, two layers of screen over top of the bottom NACA inlet. And we're gonna be working on that kind of stuff while we start with the surfaces. So a couple things I'm gonna start with here is number one, the elevators. We're gonna start off with the elevator and rudders, get the surfaces done in the back section. And while we're doing that, also gonna be starting on the engine mounting. But to do the engine mounting, we've gotta mount the pipe to the bell mouth. So the pipe comes already pre-fit, pre-drilled, all that type of stuff. It's already marked, so beautiful construction by, uh, and pre-construction by Hispano Aviation. You can see the matching marks there. We've got our mounting hardware. Now I'm not gonna use this hardware. What I'm gonna use is rivets and uh, instead of the, the bolts and nuts, just because rivets aren't affected by heat. These things could be affected by heat. So that's kind of one of the first steps that we need to do to get the engine installed is to get this pipe fit and ready. So I'm gonna get this put in place. We're gonna put rivets through there and get the bell mouth mounted. All right, so we've got the pipe mounted with the rivets, just like I talked about, fairly straightforward. Uh, on this one, because of the rivet size we used, we had to use washers on the outside. And you can see the nice uh, layup that the rivets leave you on the inside. So what we like to do on aircraft is put the seam towards the top of the aircraft. So if you are using a smoke system and you have smoke uh, coming out of the tube, it's not going through the seam. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna get the pipe installed in the aircraft and we're gonna get the carbon uh, rear exit installed on here so we can get our pipe spacing. Now this stuff's all pre-done for you as well too, and it's all marked out. So we've got our blind nuts and uh, two millimeter screws all completed already by Hispano Aviation. They've marked the top out of this cone and that gets installed like that. And we basically wanna have our pipe flush with the exit point here. Now the pipe is a normal setup where you've got the outer pipe the inner pipe's recessed, so if you run this pipe flush to the outside of the carbon, the Venturi effect pulls the air out between those two pipes. <laughs> okay guys, first thing we did here was uh, install the carbon exhaust cover, uh, then slid the pipe in place. To get the pipe in place, you needed to take the uh, engine mounts off. So this airplane has two removable engine uh, mounts, I guess if you wanna call them that. So they're this plate and that plate there. Now, in order to fit the Suiwin engine in, I had to take six millimeters off each plate. And now that I've done that, the engine fits in there perfectly. So what I'm doing is I'm just checking the position of the engine and getting this stuff all sorted out. So if we have to put blocks in here to glue anything, we can take care of that. So we've got the exhaust pipe tucked all the way down. We've got the engine kind of resting in place. And then now we just take a look up the exhaust cone and see what she looks like. So initially here, it looks like the engine needs to go a little bit towards the top of the plane, but I'm just uh, kind of eyeballing it with my head sideways. So we'll play around with that a little bit. I just want to get the, uh, the engine stuff sorted out and get the blocks glued in here for the pipe mounting before we move on to the surfaces. Now, you could drill some holes through the pipe and go into this one former here. Problem with that is there's not a lot of meat on that former, so I'd rather add some blocks to glue into or to screw into. 
So that's partly what I want to get figured out and then we'll move on to the elevators and rudder. All right guys, so everything actually lines up beautifully with the stock location. So we've got the pipe sitting on the bottom of that uh, former. Uh, what we're gonna do now is glue our uh, mounts that our pipe are gonna mount to uh, on the bottom section here. So I'm just gonna do probably two of them, I think. So we'll do one kind of on this side over here, probably in this uh, wide space right there, and one over on this side. And that should be uh, plenty for this pipe to mount to. So I'm gonna get some big, uh, big blocks of aircraft ply and we'll get those glued in place. All right, so we've got our blocks of wood mounted there. We've got them clamped and they're just uh, waiting for them to cure. So we'll leave those be for now. And if you didn't know this already, the jetty box has a servo cycler on it. So right now I've got my, uh, some of my JR servos going through 250 cycles three times. And uh, we're just uh, making them work. The nice thing about using a servo cycler like that, if you're using a new servo, is it gives a bunch of wear and tear on it. So usually with electronic items, if they're gonna fail, they're gonna fail fairly quickly. So this is one of those nice things to do to check over your equipment. So next thing we're gonna work on before we move on to the surfaces is the screen going over top of the NACA inlet. So I'm just gonna use some thick metal screen, like for window screen, and probably put two layers on there. So I'm gonna do probably a template, we'll get that figured out, and then we'll high saw it in place. All right guys, we've got the screen installed there. A little hard to show you, I'll show you through the bottom, but uh, just made some templates, uh, tack, welded them in place with some CA and uh, then use some 20 minute high salt to glue them all in place. So those are curing right now. And there's a shot from the underside. So I did two layers of screen, one at uh, the lines going straight up and down and the, then one at uh, 45 degree angle. So we got lots of coverage with that screen. So that should do a great job keeping any grass out of that bottom inlet. Okay, so with that stuff done on the fuselage and just waiting for that to cure, we're gonna move on to the rear surfaces. So we're gonna start off with the elevators and getting that done first. And uh, so let's pull those out of the package, out of the, the wing bags, and we will uh, take a look at what our process is. All right, now the included hardware is all this MP Jet stuff. Really, really nice. All the, uh, the rods are, one th side is regular threads, one side's backwards threads. So uh, we can adjust those uh, in place, which is great. Uh, we've got all of our ball joints here and the metal clevises. Now the metal clevises use uh, nice pins with C-clips to hold them in place. And uh, the one thing though is the elevators are not designed to have the clevis on the servo side. So reason for that is just the geometry back here wouldn't allow that to work. Now you can see the offset here with the servo arm. So we're gonna do a regular ball here. This is a Seacraft ball. And I'm just trying to figure out what servo horn is going to be best. Now we've got these uh, kind of thin JR ones, the one inch ones, and then we've got the uh, inch and a quarter to one inch ones. And this one actually I think is gonna be ideal. Uh, when I install this servo, it goes in just like this. That servo arm actually sits right in the middle of this channel. Now one of the things though is we need to make this channel a little bit longer, not much, because when we install this servo like this, we can't actually extend that arm. So that's uh, one of the small little things we need to do, probably extend this by five millimeters, and then we'll be able to see how that arm actually fits back here. All right, so it looks like everything's gonna work here. The only thing is there's a little bit of glue buildup right there in the center of your screen that we need to Dremel down, otherwise the servo is not gonna sit flat. And uh, it's the same thing on both sides right there. So right in this area right there on both sides, we gotta just get rid of a little bit of the glue residue. And I think that's gonna work out. All right guys, so first elevator, the left one is done. And uh, I'll kind of talk you through what I did here. So I could have used a MKS servo on the elevators, but the MKS servo actually sits closer to the inner part of the, uh, or I guess the outer, surf, outer part of the surface that way. So we would have had to make this channel wider. So the JR servo is bottomed out there. We've got the, uh, the thick arm on and we've got our 
Seacraft uh, ball joint here. We've got a washer on there, so nice and strong and durable. And uh, we're using the stock hardware for the rest of it. So this is an aluminum arm, as we've talked about, and that goes into the aluminum ball joint. So right now we are uh, nice and level, and uh, we've got a good amount of servo travel. Too much, more than we need actually, So, but uh, this will uh, be a good starting point for us. And uh, so this servos or this elevator is done. We're going to match the other one exactly the same way. We did have to open this up about two millimeters towards the outside of the uh, the surface uh, to allow that arm to have space to move. And I think we've got to do a little bit more opening up on the uh, the part of the channel that's closest to the the elevator itself. And then with our line here, I shortened our servo line up. Put. Uh, an ash lock single connector on this side and we'll just tuck all the wire into this little pocket sitting beside the servo and then the ash lock connector will go into our fuselage so uh, basically our cutout for that servo opening is going to be right here uh, in front of the rear uh, carbon there all right guys rudder is done uh, pretty straightforward setup on the uh, the rudder assembly or vertical stab. The only thing is you have to make it a Z pattern. So looking at it from this perspective, if this is our servo output shaft, this is our servo arm or horn, this is our control rod, and this is the rudder mounting. So what happens is initially I had the arm going up like this, the arm coming out like this. I mean this is the rudder so it kind of goes like that. Problem is you can't get this short enough with everything completely turned in. So then the next thing I looked at was going this route and the reason I went with a Z pattern was it extends this a little bit longer so we have everything tightened down all the way but now it actually fits and it also works better with the geometry, the hole in the back part of the rudder where the control rod goes through is, is a little bit skewed for this to be a better geometry. So anyways, it was quite simple to set up. So quite straightforward, everything's centered now. We've got the travel reduced on the rudder channel to about 70% and uh, we'll adjust it later on, but the rudder is essentially ready to go. Um, the way this works is the, I'm going to flip this over, there we go. So the servo lead comes through the side of the servo. Right, so we've got both elevators, horizontal stabs complete. We've got our rudder or vertical stab is complete and we're ready to do the wiring for this back end. So we've got the one wire hole done up here and we've got our leads already measured out. So I've got one lead uh, for each surface that's going to come across, uh, down I think, and then all the way to this front section where our uh, central box is going to be. So we're going to put snakeskin over top of the wires from this point till about uh, maybe even halfway till about here because it's got a lot of structure and stuff to go through. And uh, we want to make sure that it's uh, nice and covered and protected. So we're going to get that stuff organized. Uh, when you're routing stuff around the pipe, you want to make sure it's just tucked away out of the pipe. Uh, with the amount of airflow going through these, uh, these aircraft, it's generally not, heat's not a huge issue. So if your pipe is here and your wire is, you know, four or five inches away, uh, you're usually going to be okay. Uh, there's no real reason to add a bunch of extra weight um, in these areas. I mean, maybe by the turbine you want to pay attention to that stuff. All right, so what our rear wiring looks like here for the bull is we've got our ash lock connector there and we've got a section of about two feet of snake skin and then the rest of our wire we've used shrink tubing on the, uh, the snake skin to wire connection. So I've already got the rudder installed and the left elevator. Now one of the downsides, I guess, to the way that this aircraft is designed is any of the excess has to go inside the fuselage. And the reason for that is because there's zero room in the elevator itself. 
So when you look at the elevator there, uh, unless you opened up that pocket, which I wouldn't do, uh, the servo is a, you know, there, there's just enough room to fit the servo in that area, right? And yes, I did nick it with the Dremel, dang it. Um, so yeah, so this, this plug needs to go inside the fuselage. I don't think it's a big deal. The only thing I can see happening negatively would be with your elevators off is losing this cable inside the fuselage, which wouldn't be a lot of fun. So I think just one of those little things that I'm gonna make sure I do is when I take those elevators off, I'm going to tuck this cable inside the, uh, the hole there for the carbon rod. So that's just gonna be one of the little things that I do when I fly this thing. So what I've, I'm doing here is I'm setting this up and then we're gonna fasten those cables down inside the fuselage. And uh, then at least then we know we've got some excess. So, but there's a nice pocket system built up here in the fuselage. So when you, when you have the excess going in, it's not just dropping on the pipe. There's actually a plate built up there. And I think that part of that plate is for the, if you do, the vectored thrust system. So it's actually a really, really thought out and, and nice design inside the, uh, the elevator section there. So just gonna run the other, uh, well, we need to make our hole first, but once that's done, then we'll run the other cable forward and we can get these surfaces installed. All right, guys, so we've got our lines from the back run. It's kind of hard to see in this uh, dark fuselage, but we've got those run along the side of the fuselage there. We've got them through two plastic clips. Uh, on the back plastic clip, I did one wrap of Velcro over top of the wires, just so it's really, really tight. Otherwise the wires were able to slide a little bit. And then we come through a piece of this fireproof sheathing. Uh, so this goes from this part right here to just on the back side of that former. And that's the hot section right there, right? So uh, our, our pipe is sitting right here, turbine's sitting right there. So just a little bit of protection. And then I just uh, held this uh, sheathing in place with some CA. So the sheathing is uh, there, it's flexible stuff, but um, the wires can slide in and out. Now you could also use a pipe in this case as well too. If you had like an aluminum pipe, that would totally be fine as well. But uh, I have this stuff, so that's why I'm using it. So our back end is routed. Uh, next thing we can do is get our pipe installed. So everything's going together quite quickly. What we need to do is uh, put our pipe in place, mark out where those two blocks are, and uh, then we'll drill some holes and get our pipe screwed down. All right, and there we've got the pipe screwed in to the blocks that we glued to the former. Now, alternatively, you could put L brackets, aluminum L brackets on this woodwork here and mount it to the pipe. Either of those would work. Uh, I just went with the block method because the pipe sits all the way down and just it was just easier. And I think it's a, a nice solid mount as well too. Uh, the problem with putting those L brackets on the side of the pipe is because they're flat, they tend to, to squish the bell mouth a little bit. So this uh, keeps the shape of the bell mouth perfectly. So next thing we're gonna do, and last thing in this video is we're gonna get the plane on the stand upside down and we'll check uh, engine mounting. All right, so on these big bell mouths, I talk about this fairly often, but on these big bell mouths, what you wanna do is generally split the distance of the bell mouth. So in this case, our bell mouth, when I put my ruler in there and look straight down, this is great access, by the way, on this bull. Normally you don't get this kind of access, so you have to do all this in advance. And I can see there our measurement for our bell mouth is about two and three quarter inches. Okay, so what I wanna do is I'm gonna put my ruler at one and three eighths, and that's where we want to run our end of our tail cone from the turbine to. So there we go, we've got one and three eighths of the ruler sticking in. So what we'll do now is we'll slide our turbine back into, uh, into place, and we'll see how she looks from the tail cone. All right, so we've got that in place. Looks good from this end. Uh, the nice thing too, cutting these side rails as accurate as possible, uh, what that allows you to do is get that engine centered very easily. So right now there's a, a, just a hair of play side to side. So if I tuck that turbine all the way over, my bolts are gonna be nice and straight against the engine rails. 
And then if we look down the tail of the aircraft, we are bang on centered. Looks awesome. All right, engine is bolted in and uh, very, very simple. It's nice that everything lines up. Uh, this has been a really great plane to assemble so far. So what we're gonna do is put the hatch cover on here. I've gone and sealed all of these pieces of wood that were factory installed with uh, thin CA and uh, that also helps strengthen them up. So we'll bolt this down and then we'll flip the aircraft over and we'll get the tail pieces installed. All right guys, so we have the tail all completed. Uh, the elevators are really accurate. They go on so nice and they come off so nice. Just beautiful how, how uh, accurate they are in the whole system. The rudder is quite tight, but unfortunately the rudder we don't really ever take off. Uh, it is a real chore though to take this thing off and on. So uh, it's a very, very tight fit. I ended up using some tri-flow dry lube on the rudder, the main uh, tube there and then also the front uh, locating pin just to uh, hopefully make it a little bit better if we ever have to take it off but uh, and then we use blue blue Loctite on the the fixing bolt there for the uh, the rudder so uh, anyways this is uh, is done really accurate really nice uh, elevators feel great like almost zero play in the whole uh, whole system there maybe a uh, uh, not even a hair there's like zero play which is great so uh, that is uh, that's the bull so far and there's a shot inside of the uh, of the power plant and uh, that looks awesome all right guys and that is going to wrap up everything for the first video in the build of the bull series uh, great aircraft so far i can't say enough about how amazing this aircraft is uh, the, the weight of it is incredible. The quality of it is incredible. Uh, the amount that's pre-done for you is absolutely crazy too. So uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we get this thing done in probably three more videos and it'll be complete, maybe even less. Uh, it's, it's really quick. So um, anyways, guys, that is everything for this video. Obviously we got the tail section all done. We got the pipe mounted. We got the turbine mounted. And the next thing we'll be moving on to is the wings. Now in this aircraft, you can't really, unless you change the shape of the front tray, you can't put that front tray in uh, with the tank installed. So we kind of need to get all the electronics organized, get that located, and then we will be able to mount the tank. So that's going to be a bit of an interesting process. Just got to wrap my head around that. Not that it's overly complicated. It's just one of those steps that needs to uh, work together. So that's it guys. Next video, we'll start on the wings of this aircraft and uh, maybe some other random things. But thanks for watching the Build of the Bull series. Uh, if you're interested in this aircraft, there's some links down below. You can get it from Aeropanda, manufactures Hispano Aviation, but our, uh, our dealer here in North America is Aeropanda. So thanks guys for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.